Order the latest blockbuster from Brent Bozell and Tim Graham, Collusion, How the Media Stole the 2012 Election and How to Stop Them from Doing It in 2016. Available in hardcover. A must read for every true conservative. Order your copy now at mediacollusion.com. Hey everybody, this is Tim Johnston with MRC TV. So a couple weeks ago, a bill was in the Senate legislature that would have banned abortions after 20 weeks, and it was shouted down by a howling mob that invaded the chambers. In the weeks after that, we've been able to see kind of more of the divisions emerging between the two parties, but we've also been able to examine some areas that we may not have been able to get into otherwise. Today, I've got with me a man who probably sees the bill and this whole debate in a different light than the rest of us. Chet McDonnell was born without arms and with shortened legs. But he's since devoted his life to becoming a pro-life advocate, an inspirational speaker, an author, and founder of the group You Don't Need Arms to Be Happy. Chet, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. I understand last week you were actually called to the legislature and you were actually testifying on a part of the bill called the Fetal Exception Clause. Um, what exactly is that and what was the substance of your testimony? So the new law uh, allows for an abortion ban after 20 weeks, but it allows for an exception uh, for those uh, babies to be born with fetal abnormalities. Um, I'm not exactly familiar with every little statute that that refers to, but basically uh, it comes down to a doctor making a decision about a baby in the womb based on a sonogram screen, based on other tests. And what I testified against is uh, that exception because we don't know based on those tests what that baby is going to turn out like, what that baby is going to be able to do. Um, they think they know, uh, but, but doctors told my parents after I was born that I would never walk and I can walk just fine. So, and that was me being out of the womb. So I, I wanted to tell the legislature that we can't rely on medical professionals uh, based on uh, fallible tests to know what a baby is going to be able to do, and that's not a reason to terminate life. And obviously you're living proof of that, but if somebody came up to you and said, you know, that their baby was going to have a defect and they wanted to get an abortion, what would be an argument you'd use against that? Well, that you just don't know what life can be. Uh, when I was born, my parents went into a pretty deep despair wondering well, what life would be for me. What do you do with a child with no arms? What kind of life would I be able to live? And fast forward 33 years, uh, I now have a wife and two daughters. I uh, own my own uh, business going around the country speaking and uh, another business uh, that involves a Disney specialist travel agency. Uh, I can do whatever I want to do with my feet. They act as my hands. And what I would tell that parent is give life a chance because we don't know uh, what that baby's going to be capable of. And uh, I, I've often heard the the excuse of, well, I'm just not ready for it, or I don't have the resources for it. And my parents would tell you the same, that they weren't ready for it. Uh, but nobody's really ready for the curveballs in life. And that's what makes life enjoyable, is trying to get over those obstacles and figure out a way to truly live. Yeah, so going back to the bill itself, what has it been like on, on the pro-life side in Texas, especially after the bill initially failed? Because I know in the news we've been seeing a lot of you know, pro-choice supporters, but what has it been like on the pro-life side that you've seen? Yeah, I've really seen a redoubling of efforts. Um, I, I think there was a little bit of a sense of Texas is a pro-life state and, and we wouldn't really have to fight hard, I guess you could say. Uh, and so when the bill uh, failed through that bizarre set of circumstances, uh, I think there was a, a strong redoubling of efforts. That's why um, Texas Right to Life asked me to come down to Austin um, that's why they are continuing to ask people to come. Uh, I saw a picture this morning for the, it's going into the Senate uh, to do the Senate committee uh, today, uh, that same bill. And so I saw a picture this morning of a bunch of people dressed in blue um, lined up outside the building. Uh, so I, I think that we were kind of lulled to sleep being in um, a state that we thought was, was pretty strongly pro-life and it is pretty strongly pro-life. But that also means that we need to to redouble our efforts and, and, uh, and start fighting for what we believe in. So would you still say that Texas is a pro-life state despite the fact that, you know, a lot of people are hailing Senator Wendy Davis as a heroine after her filibuster? Was that disconcerting at all? Uh, I think, you know, what's concerning to me is that it seems to me that in Texas at least that the only people that are hailing her as a heroine is the media. Um, 
the only times I've heard uh, amongst my circle, the people I'm around, and obviously I'm around a lot more pro-life people, but the only time I've uh, heard those things is on television. I think the state itself is very strongly pro-life. It's a very conservative state. And she's a heroine, uh, maybe for the minority in the state uh, and, and for the media because they love that side of the story. Um, but what they didn't show is, for instance, last Tuesday, um, the pro-choice crowd in a rally trying to outshout the pro-life crowd by chanting Hail Satan. Um, these kinds of things are being ignored. And I think that that it shows their true side and it shows the true side of, of pro-life in Texas as to how strong the numbers are. The registration to testify and to be witnesses for the bill was nearly two to one pro-life uh, last Tuesday. So I think the state is very pro-life. So you think the media has been deceiving us a little bit then? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> I, I, think, uh, I think that they uh, choose the shots that they show. Um, they obviously didn't choose to, to show uh, the pro-choice crowd being um, way outside of, of what I thought was uh, appropriate last Tuesday, but that obviously um, fell to the wayside and, and uh, uh, you know, it, it happened. There were people down there with phones that took video, but that somehow hasn't made it on the news. So if the Texas legislature listens to the voice of the people, do you see this bill passing the Senate pretty easily becoming a law? Absolutely. I think it was headed towards passing uh, when uh, a couple of weeks ago, when uh, during the first special session, uh, when the, the mob got unruly. And um, this time they've brought in, I think it's 100 extra DPS officers uh, and uh, a lot more security. And Lieutenant Governor Dewhurst has said that if it turns out in the same situation that it did before, that he will clear the gallery, um, which I uh, greatly appreciate because it's time for democracy to take place. And they're in the minority, and I'm uh, not sorry for that. Texas elected a pro-life Senate, a pro-life House, and a pro-life governor. That's what the people want. So you would call this a mob that invaded and basically destroyed any chance of the bill passing? initially, because I've heard it called other things like a democratic filibuster, a people's filibuster. You know, there's been various terms thrown around, but would you use the term mob? Uh, let me be clear. Winnie Davis's part in it was a legal um, method that she chose to use, and she has that right to do so. The crowd that gathered in the gallery that outshouted the Senate is a mob. Uh, I don't care what they say they are. They aren't elected. They did not have the right to make noise. It's against Senate rules, and uh, they just had no place in that. If they want to observe democracy quietly, then fill the gallery and observe. If you're trying to obstruct democracy, I expect our state uh, to make sure that those DPS officers escort you out because that's an unruly mob, and there's just no place for that uh, in the legislative process. Um, if this bill passes, could you see it being a model for others within other states in the U.S.? Absolutely. I know that several states are moving towards uh, banning. And, and the reason for 20 weeks uh, to ban an abortion is because that's when uh, uh, several medical professionals and a lot of medical research have said that the baby can feel pain. And so I think it's time that we look at this as um, something that goes across the country. Uh, if the baby can feel pain, then, then we need to do something about it. Viability needs to be redetermined um, because that's an old precedent uh, back when Roe v. Wade was decided. So, yeah, I think this is a model. I think it needs to be um, brought up nationwide uh, to make sure that we're not causing undue harm for the choices that we're making. And is 20 weeks scientific fact? Because I know, again, I've heard people throwing around that it is, it isn't. I think that, that there's the research shows that it is fact. I think that you've got a lot of people who want to defend uh, the right to abortion that want to come up with their own research. And uh, um, my thought is, and, and what I've read is that, that the research that shows that, that these babies can feel pain is the correct research and, and the, is the most sound. So last question, um, what's in the future for you regarding this bill and in the pro-life arena? I mean, are you, are you going to well, continue uh, advocating for I it? I had or? been asked to, uh, to be down in Austin today, and of course, uh, there's just so much stuff going on uh, and having to be there uh, last week, so I wasn't able to make it today. But 
Uh, I'm definitely in prayer for the folks that are down there, and I hear that that um, it's already building up to be um, quite an event. For me in the future, uh, this was my first time to be before a legislature. I, I don't think it'll be the last. I think this will be a continuing fight that we need to have. We need these debates to come out um, so that we as a country can can come to terms with the fact that we're killing innocent children. Uh, I go around the country and speak all over to uh, mainly to raise money for pregnancy centers uh, and pro-life causes. And so that's my future is to continue uh, that kind of grassroots approach and to help people um, that are in need and in these crisis pregnancies uh, that, that can use the love of Jesus. So that's, that's my future and I hope to continue to speak uh, all over whenever, however I can. Well, Chet, thank you so much. It's been great having you. Thank you.